I bid you all good morning, good evening, good night, wherever you may be watching this transmission. It is I, Mike Martins. Woo! Thanks for joining me, guys. Anyways, Bank of Canada lays groundwork for digital currency. Is this a broken record? Look, here I am with wearing the same shirt two hours ago. Bank of England says it's crucial central banks research digital currency so they could strike a balance with private issuers. So here it is. This is another one from Bank of England uh, issuing it. And lo here's the video right here. You got Alf. Alf is standing in front here if you want to see it. And you go back here. Bank of Canada lays groundwork for digital currency. Well, look at this. The entire Commonwealth. I mean, Australia has been doing it. They've been doing the 10K cash ban and all kinds of cash things. You go into the bank with uh, more than X amount of money to pay off a bill. They look at you like you like you came from, you arrived from Alpha Centauri or you just arrived from the Andromeda Galaxy and not knowing what's happening here on Earth. So the Bank of Canada, uh, Canada doesn't see compelling case for uh, introducing a digital currency at the present time. But they're bringing it up in discussion. Remember, folks, that's how it starts. It comes up in discussion. Then it gets re-spoken about. Then it gets revisited. Then it becomes written. And then it becomes put into law. Then it gets approved. And yeah. But is a but is getting ready to move quickly should the need for one to become more evident deputy governor tim lane said while canadians are well served by the present payment system the central bank has begun to look at potential uh features and requirements of digital currency lane said according to the t the the text remarks delivered tuesday in montreal the central bank is now actively developing a prototype digital currency according to the background document we need to move forward to work out what potential cbdc central bank of detroit canada or something might look like and how it could be managed if the decision were ever taken to issue one. So they're looking at issuing one. The decision will come soon, people. Why? Underground economies get affected like this. And when we talk about underground economies, we're talking about um, side, food, uh, side food truck vendors, all kinds of people that depend on cash, and all kinds of people like uh, the Amish and a lot of other people, you know, that use currency and barter, or barter with currency. Uh, legal tender, of course. It, well, it's legal tender. Now, imagine going to buy something off somebody, a comic book collection for somebody in town, and they require your barometrics or your digital swipe to be able to buy it now. That's crazy, guys. You know what I'm saying? How do you give? How do you issue kids an allowance? You do a bank transfer to their bank account? It's crazy. Lane said regarding preparations for potential central bank currency in Canada. Central banks around the world are trying to get to get to grips with emerging payment technologies. Private sector initiatives such as Facebook Inc.'s Libra are adding urgency to the debate over how digital currencies should be handled. The bank for international settlements and international monetary fund have called for central banks to at least study the possibility of as private sector firms experiment with competing units of exchange. Yep, yep, yep. And with the CV, the CV virus floating around, it's not looking good and they're destroying cash in the name of health and well-being. Right? Right. Okay, the bank sees two main scenarios where the central bank could see the need to issue its own digital currency. Firstly, if the use of cash is restricted or eliminated, the second uh, and second, if the private cryptocurrencies were to make serious inroads. In both scenarios, so basically if it comes out and it makes a huge impact, you know, but what about people that live far from from machines and stuff and don't have way, you know, and employers that pay that that do that do declare income, but they pay in cash. What about there's a lot of things, right? You know what I'm saying? If both scenarios, there would be an argument for the Bank of Canada to step in, said Lane. The bank would uh, do this as a trusted public institution, creating an official digital currency that is designed with the interest of the public as its top priority with no commercial motive. So let's put the tinfoil hat on, guys. Put on my tinfoil hat. And what if... Oh... You, you, you are conservative. You follow the conservative party. We're going to technically put a hold on your digital account. 
So even if you had cash back in the day, you could still get by. Or if there's, huh, there's a, a blackout or there was an EMP or, or a corona solar flare or something happened. And we're out, power's out for six weeks, ten weeks, our crumbling electric infrastructure. How are people going to buy food? That's the question. How does one survive without electricity if it does go down? Is our electrical grid built to last? Right? Remember that huge, um, uh, that solar flare we had years, years, many years ago in Montreal where it burnt out a bunch of lines and stuff and, and the, the blackout they had in Toronto a few years after where they went like two or three days without power? Do you remember that? Well, that that hurts when you don't have food in the house or you you know you're living from paycheck to paycheck right so in both scenarios there would be an argument for the bank of canada to step in said okay the bank would do its trusted public institution creating an official digital currency that is designed with the interest of the public as its top priority with no commercial motive hmm i wonder eh and then what if we start rolling in the social credit scores the the train will be allowed to sell you tickets because of the free freedom of movement. But then what happens when your digital credits are frozen and you can't buy a train ticket? Right? Or a flight. Right? I just got my tinfoil hat on just temporarily to get you guys to think outside the box. Because they want to protect these banks from runoffs. If the banks start losing confidence... Uh, if the people lose confidence in their banking system, they're just going to go walk over and pull out their, all their money in cash. But if it's in digital reserves, how the heck do you do that? Right? And then when you go buy gold, the government knows how much gold you have because you digitally, basically made a digital purchase on gold. And guess what? We know how much gold you own and we're going to tax you yearly on any gold, any capital gains on your gold. You need to pay us a tax on it now. <gasps> Woo! Guys, wake up and smell the coffee. I got some coffee right here. Wake up and smell the coffee, folks. It isn't that the Bank of Canada's first foray into the matter. Stuff have uh, authored several papers. Um, staff. Stuff. Stuff. Staff had author, authored several papers in the potential effects of introducing the central bank digital currency, including the possibility of reducing the market power of private banks. However, the bank is shifting to the development of actual prototype, though it could still be years away from being ready and still need legislative framework. If one or more, that's what we need, more legislative framework, more federalization on our money, right? Uh, more a provincialization on our money. Imagine getting paid and the, all your credits are deducted. And then imagine going somewhere into like, ah, uh, Canadian credits. You know, oh, what if the country dies? What if the country falls economically? And, and, and the money is useless. You can't convert it into another currency. What if they did that? What if that happened where you want to convert into the US dollar or, or, or if you want to... Um, convert into Swiss dollar or, or anything but or, or or into another currency because your currency is dying like in Argentina the Argentinian peso many times they've flown or they've not flown but they've made their way to the US currency because it was the only currency that was gaining ground during the two times the uh, Argentinian market crashed and then they put on in Argentina they put measures on on how much money you're allowed to convert into U.S. dollars now per month. So a lot of people have been going to Portuguese America from, from Argentina to Brazil, and they've been buying uh, gold, and they've been tr uh, transferring their money into American dollars by crossing the border into Brazil. So that's what I wanted to kind of throw out there. So what happens? This could be a huge can of worms once you open it up, once the poop does hit the fan. If one or more alternative digital currencies threatened to become used widely as an alternative to the Canadian dollar, then the central bank issued digital currency could be used to defend monetary sovereignty, the bank said. Well, they, they, they haven't been doing much against uh, uh, monetary sovereignty against Bitcoin, against other ones. They're more worried about Libra, 
right? I'd be more worried about Bitcoin. I'd be more, more, more worried about uh, digital, those digital currencies. If, but those, I think, in my opinion, what do I know? Nothing. But I, in my opinion, I think those digital currencies, what will happen is they're going to find a way to get it regulated. And then, then it's going to be like any other form of currency, in my opinion. So by imagine going and buying silver with with digital credits and they're like, oh, OK, yeah, uh, silver. OK, then you get a, a letter in the mail from the federal government saying, oh, you hold 200 ounces of, of silver. We're going to uh, silver went up to $50 an ounce. We're going to have to tax you on your capital gains uh, on your silver. Guys, watch out. This stuff isn't a joke. They're doing this so they could protect themselves from runoffs. The second people go run to the bank and start removing their money like they did in Cyprus. They're going to start making like uh, allowances, how much money of your money you're allowed to take out. And you're going to have to give them two, three weeks notice if, if you need to remove more than X amount of dollars from your account. It's crazy. It's ludicrous. That's why I had to put my tinfoil hat on for this one because it's, I don't know, guys. I'm going to leave this up to you guys. Comment below. Now we're seeing Canada. I did a video earlier. I'm wearing this. ALF is in the front here. You can't miss it. Here it is. Crucial for central banks to consider digital currencies. And this is from Bank of England. I got this from the Raven. And then I'm boom, I'm popping around. And I'm seeing all kinds and all kinds of comics. Uh, comments, comics. Um, so come on on. Join the channel. If you want to join the channel, join the channel. Be a part of the community. Come on, Mike in the Night or Trends in the Housing Market, where we discuss the up-to-date trends in housing slash jobs economy. And Mike in the Night, where we discuss the darkness and the unknown that lies beneath our feet. Let me know what you guys think. Comment below.